Hello! In this quick R tutorial, we're going to describe categorical variables with functions and arguments. And before you, we begin, I should emphasize that you should have already downloaded, or loaded rather, uh, the Titanic data set and installed RStudio with the Mosaic package. And if we go and look at our interface here, we'll see that we'll see a familiar screen, I hope. We'll see the data set or the data frame here and it, uh, identified by the number of observations and, and variables. And we're going to explore the idea or the language of what it means to have uh, in our, in the, among the R community, uh, among our users rather, what a function is and what an argument is. And functions are simply statements or, or groups of statements that tell our studio what to do. And we type these in our, the R script. And we're going to emphasize, we're going to look at something called the tally function, which requires again that you install the mosaic package. And then we're going to look at this idea of arguments, which are these elements or bits and pieces of the function that are separated each by commas. You can see here that I have a, the tally command um, on several different lines, yet I also have that same uh, tally command, I'm sorry, tally function, we could say, in one line. I separated it here to show to you that um, we can actually deconstruct the, in the way you might parse a sentence, for example, or decon look at elements of a paragraph, separate elements of a paragraph into sentences. Here we can take a function and look at what comprises the core elements of a, an, of, of a function here. And this is relevant here because you'll see a lot of interchange here and a lot of uh, ability to switch and swap different parts of a function. But I think it's important because sometimes I'll also, or other people, I will use these words or other people will use these words when you think about functions and arguments. It's just more jargon that I think um, it's important to use because I think it helps frame your thinking about uh, data analysis. But we don't want to get hitched up on that. We really want to get um, um, dirty with the data, so to speak, or get our hands or wet, our feet wet, rather. And we're going to look at three functions in particular. We're going to look at the tally function to look at proportions and counts within the Titanic data sets, as well as percentage, percentages. Then we're going to look at um, the, the um, we're going to look at bar graph, the bar graph function, and then we're going to look at the pi fa function. And you'll notice something here that the pi function is actually nested within the tally function. So that'll be useful later on. But the point here is really just to emphasize that we there are different ways of representing data that we provide uh, within the, the problem uh, one script. And that these could be understood if you really want to deconstruct it, uh, deconstruct it as an expression of several different arguments. And I want to show this. So as we had seen earlier with the view command, or the view function rather, the capital V, I, E, W, and then Titanic function, you'll, you'll see that um, we have the data frame right here. And we'll see that um, there are several categorical variables. What's important here is that we are often interested in describing or understanding what one categorical variable looks like. In this case, we want to perhaps look at the percent of people, um, well actually we'll look at counts, um, that was the original uh, format, you'll see that if I highlight this bit of syntax, or you'll see and I click the run button, um, uh, whoops, we'll actually uh, see an error here, um, the word is count here, and this is actually a, a, a teachable moment, um, the fact is that even if you specify a command with by, off by one letter, this may seem intuitive to use the word counts, you have to be quite specific when it comes to uh, coding or, or syntax. So last time, uh, or before, we spoke about the importance of capitalization. Here, we want to emphasize that if you actually make a mistake, it, R will typically give you, uh, uh, will tell you that you made an error in the argument. And in fact, it says there's an there's a error in the argument function right here. Um, it should be, and it says it should be one of these arguments right here. Um, we emphasize the count, proportion, and percent here as three different kinds of formats here. The default, by the way, is the count. But the point here is this prints in the lower left-hand corner of the RStudio environment 
on your screen the, the actual counts, the number of passengers belonging to each category of the lower, middle, and upper class. Now, the argument here can be de deconstructed as the first one, um, first argument identifying, <coughs> rather, um, identifying which variable you want to look at. And if you look at the t Titanic data set, you see that class indeed is one of these variables, and we had seen that with the names function that we had seen earlier. Um, the second argument tells um, our studio what we want to look at. Well, in this case, we just want to know the raw counts, what number of people or passengers belong to each category. The last argument may seem redundant, but in fact is really important. It tells our studio which data set we want to look at, and that's important for specificity. And each argument is actually is encapsulated with an open and closed parentheses. So here we have an argument, a function that says, uh, and by the way, there's a little thing here called a tilde. This is really more of a formula or an expression. Someone had asked a great question about this earlier. The point here is that this was written, this function was written in a way to emphasize the fact that each of these arguments contribute to the output that you see. So here you have uh, a data set, the Titanic data sets, with the specification that we want to know the counts and the specification of the categorical variable, these equal or result in what we see down here. And that's what really the, everything to the right of the, or you know, written before or to the right in this case of the tilde sign in, our, in the R environment says are the inputs that result in the outcome that we're interested in. And that's more relevant when we look at expressions of say uh, regression models or simple linear regression where you have an outcome that is predicted by several um, um, variables or pr predictors rather. So in any case, here we have the tally function. We can also change the formats, specify that to be the proportion or the percent. These are decimal places that equal to one. If you want these to be a percent, you could just simply do this here. And here you see the same thing. You actually see uh, simply the percentage, uh, the, the, as a, as a per percentage rather, of these numbers. Uh, now, one thing that we might want, may want to do is we may want to round these. There's a function within a function. This is called nesting. You see this little function here. I'm going to actually uh, hit return and actually deconstruct this because you can actually see this. It may be a little confusing for some people, but I want to emphasize that here we have the tally function separated by a comma. But you're rounding everything that you did with the tally function, so this is a percent, to two decimal places. So here you have a function within a function. This actually is a little bit simpler because you, here you have the per percentages um, in it rounded to two decimal places. And if you can actually include not, nothing there, you'll see this rounds to the nearest integer. So you have 48% in the lower, 25 and 27% in the upper class. So now we're going to talk about two other functions, the bar graph and the pie chart function. And here we'll see, it using the bar graph, you'll see the same syntax here. You'll see the tilde, you'll see the variable, and here we're just going to talk about the counts. The default is the counts. You can see the bar chart function here. Um, there's actually an error here. Um, we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's, sorry, let's put this, let's actually specify that in this way. Um, well, well, we'll worry about that error here, but you can see that R was often wanting to tell you um, that you know it'll complain if it wants something here. It probably wants a zero there. There you go. You'll see that it actually wants an integer there to tell us to specify exactly how how many uh, digits to round to. But I want to emphasize here um, or focus now on moving from the tally function to which, which gives us tabular input or tabular output on the percent um, and then the proportions and then the counts of people by a category, one categorical variable. We can also do this with um, creating plots. And this is the first time we're actually going to see in our right-hand corner, uh, sometimes it may be in your lower left-hand corner, it depends on how you have this, you'll have what is called the plot uh, pane. And here you'll see that um, you're going to print within our studio if you run this syntax, um, a, a simple bar chart. And your colors may differ, but you'll see the counts here. So what we have here in terms of the counts that we saw earlier, um, in terms of 500, 251, and 284 for each of the classes, now we have a visualization of this distribution right here. That is very useful for visualizing data. And um, that's 
crucial. Now, the, the last thing I want to emphasize is, or show you is the pie chart. And here we see another example of nesting of arguments. This is a rather simple one. The pi r function is a simply pi within parentheses. Now, a pie chart is often maligned among statisticians, but it's actually quite useful if you're communicating what you're doing. And here, what we're doing is we're taking whatever we do in the tally function and we're creating a little pie chart out of it. And I'm going to show you what this looks like here. I highlight the syntax, and then we can click Run, or I, I will sometimes use a keyboard uh, shortcut. And here we have it. Um, it looks a little bit um, granular here, but you still you see the, the pie chart pane. So here we have a quick summary. We reviewed um, what it was. Uh, just to review, we looked at three functions. We looked at the tally function to provide counts, percentages, and um, percents. And we also rounded those. And we looked at a bar graph and a pie chart, you, looking at for the first time at uh, the, the pain, uh, the plot pain within our studio. And finally, the overall argument is that overall theme here is when we talk about R, the R environment, we're basically making um, using functions, which are as a term to um, tell R Studio what to do. And these are these are comprised of little elements that are typically separated by comments that are that can be swapped around. So we can specify the data set, the variable, and the format. And we'll focus a little bit more on these later when we look at more than one categorical variable. But for now, here you have the elements to look at one categorical variable at a time using the Titanic data set. Thank you very much. And I hope that this has been useful.